Welcome back to the Introduction to Substance Painter series. So in this series, we're going to be painting an object, starting with an object that we sculpted in the previous tutorial series. If you are not doing the ZBrush series, uh, feel free to use your own model. If you have your own model, uh, you can use the techniques used in this series on your own model. And the whole point of this series is to take a project from start to finish and show a process to texture that object. And this this process can be used on any object. It doesn't have to be specifically this object that I'm gonna be using. But to begin, we're gonna to go to File, New, and this is how you actually add a new object to Substance. And then you need a uv object, a uv model. So in this case, we have an FBX file, underscore low, egg monster. Open that, I'm gonna set it the document resolution to 4K. This can be changed. I don't have UDIMs. UDIMs are just multiple UVs. I just have a single UV, so I can just hit OK. And here's our model. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to bake it. I already did this in a previous video, but I'm starting from scratch so that if you didn't watch that video, you will see baking here as well. Uh, so you go to Texture Set Settings. If that's closed, you can go down to Window, Views, Texture Set Settings, and then click on it. Go to Mesh Maps, Bake Mesh Maps, click on that. And then we need to actually select our file here. So click here, and this is the underscore high file that we exported. Now if you don't have an underscore high file, like if you're just doing this without the ZBrush uh, series, you're not doing the ZBrush series, um, that you could, I'll show a different way to bake it right after this. So we do not have an ID, so you can turn that off. Um, you can leave everything else on though. And then we need, I'll just put this down to 2K. You can scroll down and this is important under match. You have to go to by mesh name. And you can see here it's looking for an underscore high, which is the high model. And the underscore low, which is the, the current model in substance. Then you just click on bake. Then it'll take a second to bake it. It usually takes like any, anywhere from like 30 seconds to a minute or so. It usually doesn't take that long. And it depends on the resolution and how complicated it is and so on. So if it's a very simple object, it won't take that long to bake at all. So you can see there it's starting to bake it. And this is with an HD model that's like very similar in, in shape to... Okay, so here's what it looks like baked. And we haven't even started painting it yet. So this is the result we get. Uh, so if you don't, if you're using a different model, I'm gonna delete all this. If you're using a different model, you can still bake it, it just won't look like that because essentially what it was doing was it's mapping the HD model onto the low res model. So if you don't have HD details for it to map, you can still generically bake it just by clicking bake mesh maps, uh, getting rid, let me see if I can get rid of this. There we go. Get rid of your HD model, your high model. I uh, just hit always. You can just bake it without a model. So here's what it looks like if you just bake it without a model. It'll still generate these maps and give you like ambient occlusion. I think that's how you say that. <laughs> I always call it AO. So, so you can still see that it'll it'll bake like in crevices and stuff like that. So here's. It still has some effect, right? It still kind of gives you some of those details. It won't give you normals though. It'll give you like world space normals, curvature, stuff like that. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and go back, and just revert. So this, you can do anti-aliasing as well, you don't need to though. So by mesh name, so we'll just bake it now. Putting putting it back at where we were at. I just wanted to show baking it. If you didn't have it, uh, like an HD model to bake, that's fine, you don't need one. It just, you know, it can look nicer. It depends on what kind of result you're going for. And you can always achieve those details by manually painting them in. So like if you want to spend most of your time painting instead of like sculpting or something, you could just like model a thing. All right, so here's our details back. And this is these are details from the sculpt. So, okay. So here is the result that we will be painting. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna make two fill layers. And the reason why is we're gonna mask one of them. So there'll be a fill layer for the eggshell and then a fill layer for the inside. So let's make these two fill layers. So we'll call this inside, double click 
and then you can type the rename. So you can just double click on the name to rename it. I'm going to turn normal off. I'm going to turn metal off because it's, there's it's an egg and a monster, so it's not going to be metallic. So for the base color, so this is the inside. Uh, let's do like something like that. And then for the roughness, let's reduce it a little bit. Let's make it like 0.5. And then the height, we can turn that off as well. And then for the egg, we'll make another fill color. We'll call this egg. We'll turn off metal, normal, and height. And then for the fill color, I'll use a kind of like off white. So it's like kind of close to white, but it's like slightly tinted, maybe like a yellowish off white. All right, so right now we can't see the inside anymore. So we actually need to mask this, right? And this model was just Z remeshed, meaning I didn't spend a ton of time with the UVs. So I don't have like insane control over the UVs. Um, so if I turn on, if I click this, you can kind of see that it's like not very precise in the way it's uh, retopologized. Like you can retopologize by hand so that you can like quickly, you could make the shell like a straight line or not like a straight line, but like a, a consistent line so that you could select that thing and make it like a UV island. That's more advanced, but for this beginner series, I don't want to go over that just yet. Uh, so, all right, so what we're going to do, we're going to add a black mask. So now that we see the inside and we're going to paint on the black mask. Now this is probably not the best way to do this. Like I said, the best way would to be to have UV islands that you can just rapidly select because you can use this tool to select by UV island. So like if you do this mesh fill, it'll actually look at each UV. I'm sorry, is this it? Yeah, UV chunk fill. So, and beca so because these UVs were just quickly made in ZBrush, that's not optimal. Uh, and same thing with like the Z remeshing. So that's something for like long-term you want to do for your models. Uh, but in this case, we're actually gonna paint so we can practice painting. So that's actually good. All right, so what we're gonna be doing, uh, you wanna select the hard basic brush under brushes. And if you don't have the shelf, you can go to window views shelf, click on brushes. And then when you have the mask selected, the brush should be selected click on hard basic brush. This will get you a brush that's 100% opaque. Like it's just completely solid. And what we're doing is we're actually painting away the mask for the eggshell. And the reason why we're doing it this way is because we're painting on a mask so that we can edit what's underneath the mask at any point in time. So what you can do, you can use the mouse for like the big parts and then hand paint in the small parts like the seams. So you can just kind of go like this just make sure not to get it on the um, the inside parts because we want the shell to be its own thing. So right now we're doing like, we're basically flatting it. Like that, that's like a painting process in 2D where you have like your line art and you like flat the image, meaning to make it like, like flat colors and then you go ahead and add details later. So this is just like the first step. So you can kind of see I'm starting to block in the color now, if you do it right, if you have your UV islands, which are these guys, so that like the thing, the geometry is like perfect and the shell has its own geometry, if it, it, assuming it's on the same object, um, you could rapidly just fill in these masks. But for the purpose of practicing painting, I think this is okay. And this is also a beginner video. I don't wanna get like two in the weeds just yet. That'll be more for the intermediate stuff. So right now I'm just like using the mouse and you can still use the stylus if you want. I usually use it to refine. Like when I get these big blocked in parts, I just kind of use the mouse because it just, it doesn't have pressure sensitivity and you can turn off pressure sensitivity up here if you want. All right, so we're kind of blocking it in. We're getting there. And we can adjust the colors. That's why we're using fills. So if I want to change the inside to blue or whatever, I can do that. That's always an option. All right, we're almost there. So I wanna get these big chunks and then I'm gonna hand paint in the rest. And this will just be for the first part of the video or for the first video rather. 
And if you go over, you can always erase it, so it's not the end of the world. <laughs> it's, it's totally fine. Alright, now we're going to actually use... I'm, a, uh, I'm, I'm hoping you have a, uh, like a Wacom tablet or something. There's cheaper versions of a, a Wacom tablet if uh, you don't want to buy Wacom because some of their stuff can be kind of expensive. But uh, personally, I have a Cintiq, the 24-inch. It's on an arm, the ergonomic arm, so it's basically floating off my desk. If you actually saw my desk, it would appear to be floating off of it, which is kind of cool. Um, you can paint over this a little bit. Because we'll, what we'll do, we'll paint over it so we, we make sure to get all of the egg and then we'll erase it. But I don't want to go like way over because that's just annoying to, to do all of that. And this is still relatively quick. And the reason we want to use masks is because it's not destructible. Meaning that like you can make changes to it. It's not permanent. So if you have to make quick changes, quick edits, you can do that. And this mask, like the reason why this mask needs to be perfect is because we can use materials, like smart materials, or um, even smart masks, to get cool effects and to modify the material without having to paint in everything. It's good to know how to paint everything. In this, in this series, we're gonna paint everything from scratch so that you have the skills. Because it's good to know how to do it, because if you wanna just quickly add some little thing, it, it, it's usually faster just to like, add like a paint layer and just like paint using height map and stuff to make some quick change if that's what you want to do make sure to fill it in so the key is to not have like little cracks where the inside part shows through so we're, we're gonna over paint the edges a little bit and then afterwards we're gonna refine it so that we have a nice clean mask and then I'll show a way to check to see your colors, I'd like to see if you're missing sections. Because sometimes uh, with like reflections, it can be hard to tell if you're missing parts of the paint. Like if there's like little holes that you just can't notice. So I'll show that in a second after we get the bottom. a lot of painting <laughs> another thing we could have done is made this these separate objects uh, for this video I didn't want to I'll do that in a future video where it'd be much easier if these are just separate objects you could just fill them immediately it would take seconds so but for the first for the first tutorial I wanted to keep it simple you know just sculpt a single thing like try to work foundationally if that makes sense start off very small very simple do quick and dirty things just to get you in you know get your foot in the door and then start going over like proper ways of doing things for like actual projects uh, not to say that this couldn't be used for a project it's just that there's way better ways this is just like the quick and dirty method to to get started Now that we've painted that, you can go over to here where it says material and click on base color. And it'll actually just show you color with no like material, like PBR is disabled. So you can easily see if there's like a little green speck. And so far I'm not seeing any. So I think we're good. And then you can just click on this and go back to material. All right, now we're going to go to the erase brush. Uh, alternatively, you can stay on the same brush so like when you're painting on a mask, when you're painting in white, you're adding. When you're painting in black, you're subtracting. So if we just put it to black, now we're erasing. So we can use the same brush to refine this. So I just decrease the brush size, and then we just want nice clean edges here. And the nice thing about baking, especially if you sculpt in these little like crevices, you can see clearly where it should end, like where the uh, transition is between the two shapes. And we're basically just painting 
black on the mask with the brush. Alternatively, you can use the eraser, switch to the hard edge brush, the basic hard brush, and the, the eraser will basically just be an eraser. <laughs> but you can also just use the brush and just change it to black. And this is like very core basic stuff you should know for painting with masks because masks are extremely important in Substance Painter. Especially smart masks. Smart masks are insane. Once I show you how to use those, they're insane. <laughs> so just refine it as best you can. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but it should be pretty clean, I want to say. Like, if you see little parts, like little specks that look weird, you should probably try to get rid of them. Use your best judgment. And then as we zoom out, you can see it actually does look pretty decent. Except for, like, this part here. This will probably be the most time-consuming part of this. Just like getting these edges looking nice. But it's good to get familiar. So, alright, so to move around, uh, mouse... Uh, I, I'm kind of assuming you watched the intro to the Substance video I made, but uh, scroll zooms in, right-click and drag zooms in, uh, holding an alt. So scroll at, at all times zooms in, right click plus alt zooms in, uh, alt plus click rotates around, and then alt plus middle click pans. So I usually have my mouse, like it's like directly underneath my um, floating monitor. <laughs> so I can just quickly like move to the mouse um, you can also hold an alt and tap on your with your stylus to rotate around so you don't have to move to the mouse too often. Just trying to get these edges nice and refined. Now this isn't the best way to do this for sure. Like you should these should be either separate objects or your model should be retopologized in a way where you can just rapidly make selections because good topology will save you a lot of time for things like this. But this is good to practice because if you want to actually hand paint models, the best way to practice is to hand paint models. So if you're learning by hand painting, it can't hurt. And there are upsides to hand painting. Like if, if you're just making a bunch of props and you're gonna uh, use Nanite in like Unreal Engine. Uh, so what Nanite does is you can take a model with high polygon density and Unreal Engine will automatically reduce its uh, poly count while keeping its appearance the same. You can, you can rapidly make a ton of assets for like an Unreal project using nanites and you'll have the best of both worlds you have the appearance you want with the speed of making things if you're doing them in a method like this because it's like pretty quick like retopologizing things with good topology if you're not good at it can take a long time um because there are like certain principles to follow because you have to sculpt it and then retopologize it which can be time consuming um, alternatively there's ways to use zbrush to to control your retopology somewhat um, so we have this edge here. So basically we want to just go through and refine these edges. And the bake should help you do that. And, and part of the tutorial for the ZBrush series that I did for the intro to ZBrush for beginners was that we actually sculpted in these little seams here using the damn standard brush, which is BDS. Uh, that's the keyboard input combo to get to the damn standard brush. So that was like intentionally done for this tutorial, like planning in advance. So that when we got to this part, we could easily see where the shell begins and where the inside of the body begins to paint this section in here.
And the big upside of this is if you're good at sculpting, it's basically just sculpting but with paint. <laughs> it's like the same process. It's very similar. It's all just using the stylus. Like brush control and stuff like that. Yeah, you can see here it looks... So like the different... You can see the difference. I kind of like that green color, so I'm going to click on this green color. Let's make it like... Let's make them like yellow. That actually fits because it's an egg, so it's like the yolk type thing. I think that's kind of funny. All right, we'll make them yellow. Nice yellow egg. So even though it's like some monster, it's like somewhat rooted in reality. So we're just continuing to refine this edge, get used to the brushes. That's really the key, right? If you want to, especially if like you want to hand paint. And this is still good to know for masking, like if you want to refine a mask or something like that. And we'll go over the, we'll make tutorials on how to do like proper topology and how to set up UV islands for rapid painting. Because that's very useful to know. But that's definitely not something that's like beginner friendly in my opinion. Because I remember being a beginner in 3D. And I remember... Just wanting to do basic, like, how do I get a thing from ZBrush into Substance Painter? I remember that took me so long to figure out. And it was, like, so hard to find. Like, there weren't really that many good guides for it. There are there are now to some degree. Uh, but you have to know where to find them. But it definitely wasn't, like, obvious or clear. But now that I know... I'm trying, like, I'm trying to make this as concise as possible, where it's like you get, go from point A to point B and dispel all of the weird in-between parts you might not know about. Because <laughs> I remember how difficult it was for me to get, like, just, even just getting a model into, like, Unreal Engine. Like, getting a thing from ZBrush to Substance to Unreal. Like, just that process. Just learning that. I remember it took me so much time to pick up and now I'm going to make videos on it because <laughs> it's really not that bad you just have to know the steps and then once you know the steps you know the steps all right so we'll kind of be a little bit zoomed out here the other thing too is as you're going around you have to kind of get used to, to like painting on a 3D object. So if you're not used to doing that, it is kind of different, especially if you're used to 2D painting, because you are you have to get used to like the physicality of it, like the dimensions. So you have to like kind of develop it, this kind of like perception thing, where as you're painting on it, you understand like the depth changes based on like the lighting of the model. And a lot of that, I think, is subconscious. And from practice, like, you have to learn it. So that's why I, I designed these tutorials in this way. So that you're forced to do things that will teach you skills, <laughs> I think. Let's get the top of the shell done. I'm going to do other tutorials too for, for like sculpting. Like this little monster guy isn't the only thing. This is just the first one. I'm going to do some more super simple ones. I want to do a few basic introductory ones where I go over different concepts in each one. So that while you're doing the tutorial, you're basically learning things that are useful in general. And that's, like, the idea. So I can cover different concepts and shit like that. Alright. We're almost done with the top. Which is good. We just have this little part here. And then we can compare the top to the bottom because we'll have 
part of it refined and the other part is the mask is not refined. And the nice thing about this mask is we can reuse this. We can copy and paste one mask into another so that if we ever want to do anything with these shapes, this is like a selection in Photoshop. It's just always there. So all right, let's look at the top, just kind of scrutinize it a little bit, see if we can find any parts that look weird or bad. Uh, so like right here, this like ridge could be much nicer. And like right here. Okay, and we'll continue looking at the top to see. So like some parts in here. Okay. And you can rotate the light by holding in shift and right clicking to check the different areas. So like right here looks a little weird. Okay, so the top is done, I think. Now we just have to do the bottom. Okay, so we have the, to <laughs> the top of our egg monster. <laughs> we'll save this. Um, hmm, what should we call it? I guess just egg monster. That's our substance file. Now we have to go through and paint the bottom. Or paint the bottom. We have to refine the bottom. So let's do that. Oops. Just, we'll just stick to the brush. I put the eraser on because I'm used to using the eraser. Okay, and then this part, we need to paint that in so we can just switch it back to white. You can always refine it additively or, or subtracting. I don't know if subtractively is a word, but like you can add to it or subtract. So like if you if you overpaint, you can always subtract. If you underpaint, like if you don't paint it in fully, you can always add more to it later. That's the beauty of working with masks. All right, let's try to speed this up a little bit. So by using a larger brush, just kind of dragging slowly. along the edges. I do want to do a video on wrist movement, like the different motions for like painting. And sculpting because that is a thing there's like different there's like finger movement like wrist movement arm movement and then and for arm movement there's like long and short like you can use your entire arm or you can use like from your elbow and I kind of want to do a video on just that at some point because I, th I think that's like relevant because I noticed um, for certain things certain movements are better Like that was long arm movement. So was this. Essentially, no, like nothing else is moving except for my 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 um, entire arm from my shoulder to get like a nice smooth line type of situation. Alright, 
and then I'm going to use middle click just to pan around. Kind of use shift right click to move the light so you can see what you're doing. done with this one. So I'm just painting in the shell there. Okay, we just have to finish up this. Section. And then the next video we'll go over uh, painting in just like actual color for the model. And then we'll do it like by steps. We'll do color first, then like probably roughness, probably at the same time, and then add height to things. Because height can really add a lot. And we'll do some blending modes probably as well. Okay. All right, let's check out the bottom now. This part's a little suspect. And when we add shadows and stuff, like this will start to blend in a little bit better. But for now, I think this is overall decent. Maybe some of these little edges here. And you can go through and refine it as much as you want. But now we have two clear different shapes. And then one thing I will do, some areas need painted up, like here. Yeah, you can, you can kind of tell where it does. Some of these edges need a little bit more refinement. All right, so this is the result so far. It's basically an egg monster. <laughs> so, all right. So here is, so let's save it, obviously. Let's <laughs> save that. Then I'll, I'll clear the mask. So you can see the difference. Then just undo. You don't have to clear the mask, I was just showing it. So we got our bake done. We learned how to, like, how to bake uh, generically, how to paint onto a black mask, how to refine the edges of a black mask so that you have this result. Now, why did we do this? So this is, so like, let's say I wanna add like, let's say we're just doing this quickly let's say i want to add some shadows or some like more color now that we have this mask you don't have to do this this isn't part of the tutorial i'm just like demoing this you can go ahead and start adding in color uh, let's make this a little bit more noticeable so we can actually add in shadows now extremely quickly like extra little details on the edges because of the mask. The mask is like the perfect edge between these two things. And now that we have that, 
we can paint along this and add shadows. And there's also different things we can do with the mask. But this is this is the main reason for hand painting. So that when you paint underneath something, it layers. Because otherwise, this is what the result will look like. Right? Where you're painting on both layers. But with the mask, that's the result. So you can kind of see... Here's the, the thing we're painting in. So it never goes on the mask. And that's the big upside. Once this part is done, you can hand paint very rapidly and get pretty good results pretty quickly, I think. So that is why we did that. If you're wondering why, why did I just spend like 20 minutes <laughs> refining a mask, that is the reason. And also you can do cool stuff like change the color of the egg, whatever you want to do. Uh, let's actually stylize this a little bit. Let's make this a little bit more Let's make the egg like light blue. This is like this is like too reminiscent of like a real life egg, so I want to make it a little crazy. Uh, maybe not this crazy. <laughs> Let's kind of make it like alien like, just for fun. It's, uh, I don't like that he's purple. Maybe if I make him pink. Eh, maybe not that either. Let's try to come up with a cool color combination. I like the blue, but I don't like the purple. Maybe something like that, just to make it kind of funny. Maybe the blue is too crazy. <laughs> you have to kind of play around with things. But yeah, we'll, we'll figure out what to do in the next video for the colors. But for now, this is the result we have. The, the important thing is that we separated these two things and then we're gonna figure out the color scheme we want and then from there, uh, we can start painting in some details and getting into like the weeds with um, being specific about like brush strokes and you know, the correct, not the correct, but like good alphas to use for different effects and stuff like that. So yeah, thanks for checking this out. Definitely like, comment, and subscribe if you found this useful, helpful, or enjoyable, and I will see you in the next one.